Let me ask a question. Is it possible for something that is dated to the point of arguing that it's intentionally dated, not unlike a time capsule, and is also something that's intended for a specific crowd of people, become a timeless classic to be looked back on and still enjoyed to this day, even for the people that never lived through any of it? Here's a dance you all can do. Let me introduce to you who in everybody pose. Honestly? This question isn't easy to answer, because it isn't an easy feat in any way to pull off successfully. However, I think that Lucky Star does answer this question with a resounding yes. To all three of you who have never heard or seen something towards the show, Lucky Star is a 2007 anime adaptation of a 2004 comic strip manga created by Kagami Yoshimitsu. The show focuses on four high school girls, Konada Yuzumi, an outlaw proud otaku with a smug attitude, Tsukasa Hiragi, a well-meaning klutz, Kagami Hiragi, a sundere, and Miyuki Takara, a glasses-wearing, well-endowed rich girl. While the show itself, you can argue, has become relevant in this day and age, it ultimately is impossible to forget the impact the show had on both the internet and the anime community for the years to come. Even nowadays, with social media turning the opening into a meme for a made-up event known as Out of Touch Thursday. But outside of its influence and background, the show itself? In the grand scheme of things? Honestly mundane. But while many anime series both before and after this series would also have its fair share of mundanity, there was something that Lucky Star had that ultimately many other series didn't that I'd argue is the reason why it's still being looked back on. That is, the inclusion of animated pop culture in Japan. Now, generally speaking, pop culture is something that is only in the now, being something that's popular for a portion of time, then fading as people move on to the next. So by that standpoint, it's weird to say that a show that incorporates said culture is something that still holds up in a way. But how Lucky Star makes it work is not so much including it because it's popular, but including it because it's part of a lifestyle. Japanese media for a very long time has been a lifestyle, will not confirm or deny it's when you actively try to avoid your family from seeing in the fear of them disowning you, for a number of people, so much so that nowadays it's damn near impossible to throw a rock in the world and not hit an anime fan. But back in the day, it was more of a niche thing, something that many of us liked but kept to ourselves because that shit was like holding hands with another guy in public back then. We all knew what was coming next back in the day. Lucky well, Star mentioning anime, manga, games, and even drama CDs into just about every single episode was done in a way that ultimately, you could tell was something that these characters were actually into. When you blow up watermelons with a shotgun, you get pieces of watermelon all over you. You watch too much anime. It wasn't simply having a series like Haruhi Suzumiya be referenced because it was popular and that's it, but the references were a part of the characters' lifestyles. Come on, hurry up! If you're late, there's a penalty! Penalty! Is this how you treat all your customers? Yeah, that's kind of the protocol here. Many of the jokes centered around this media felt like to me like they were being included in a way that many of us who are anime and manga fans include them in our everyday life. It's how we have fun and enjoy life. For example, there's a scene in Lucky Star where some strangers with their friends in the background fully cosplayed, with one of the characters taking pictures of them. However, it's just out in public and it's a small bit that doesn't lead anywhere. Now imagine being a fan of a series and seeing someone out in public wearing a cosplay outfit from that same series. Not during a convention or anything, they just are. Wouldn't you have a similar reaction to seeing them like that in public? This is a part of what I mean about Lucky Star incorporating anime pop culture like it's a part of a lifestyle. It's less centered on, this media is popular, we need to mention it, and more, there are characters that like this media, we should include it. To me, the show focuses on this media because, much like many of us with anime and manga, it's something that we love in our own ways, not unlike Konada. Don't be dissing the ginger! Now, I know I haven't talked too much about the story and characters, but truth be told, there isn't much at all. It's an episodic slice of life comedy, and each of the main characters are mainly stereotypes of different girls in anime and manga. They don't really develop or grow, but at the same time, that isn't really the point of the series. Is that supposed to be me? Are you making a fairy tale? I'd like to read it when you're done! Oh god, I have to stop drawing my friends like this! I'm such a pervert! But back onto the jokes. Now, there is a valid criticism out there about these kinds of jokes that can be directed towards this show. How jokes about certain media that many of us aren't in the know about can go over our heads. But again, much of these jokes feel less like they're referencing something and told in the lenses of people who get it and people who don't get it. There's this one command I heard where the trainer says, Chin Chin, so do you guys know what that means? 
All those who just thought of something X-rated, raise your hands. Not everyone in the show is going to be in on it, obviously. But how the references and jokes are used and their reactions and responses, they help elevate these jokes to a point where anyone watching it may actually find it funny regardless. But outside of that, there are plenty of jokes in it that aren't necessarily references and can get a laugh either way. Much of that is on Konato's behalf. This blue-haired catmouth otaku shorty became iconic as time went on. Back in the day, it was hard to find an anime meme that didn't have her face in it. Honestly, Lucky Star's writing with its comedy has a fair balance to it. Other works I could tell you either use references or jokes and simply go for a quick laugh, mainly for the people who get it, such as Good Luck Girl, or just include the jokes as a throwaway bit, like a multitude of films intended for children. Lucky Star honestly feels to me like it has that balance. While certain references and jokes may fly over a number of people's heads or just not that funny, the way the jokes include the references is usually told in a way that feels like it's funny without even knowing what it's referencing. For example, there's a full bit about Gundam, the kicker here being that all the names associated with the properties are censored. I can tell you as a kid, it was just funny hearing all of that bleeped out as if they were swearing their asses off. And outside of the anime and manga, the jokes centered around the everyday life of a high schooler also hit home a number of times as well. Like how there are those who work hard day and night to keep their grades up, and those who coast on by with pulling all nighters the day before the test. Or just stuff like this. What does Yowie mean? No, like genuinely. Like what the fuck does that mean? Alright, outside of the writing, let's talk about one of the major highlights of this show. The music. Or more so, how the music plays into the episodes. It's interesting when you pay attention to it, because the way it's utilized is unique to this series. So what's up? Why'd you call? Oh yeah! Why did I call you? I'm super happy I'm a year older. I'm old enough to play games with a mature rating. <laughs> so what? You've been playing those games this whole time anyway. <laughs> While there may have been other shows before and after this series has done something similar, Lucky Star really makes the formula with the music its own. As for the animation, I mean it's adapting a four panel manga series, but it's also done by Kyoto Animation, so the quality of the animation will be 95% alright and 5%... Stay. I suppose it looking low budget, especially nowadays, could be a criticism, but I actually like it. As opposed to certain anime that are inconsistent with the animation quality for various reasons behind the scenes, Lucky Star makes it a part of the style, utilizing simplistic backgrounds and locations with relatively simplistic designed characters, and pretty simple moments when it comes to the characters moving, making the small highlights and even the opening of the show stick out so much more in terms of nostalgia. I haven't even talked about the voice acting. I think it's important to note that a number of actors and actresses in the dub, and even the sub of the show, can also be heard in Haruhi Suzumiya, a series that's referenced constantly throughout the series. How dare you peep at Mikuru's panties like a creep! I never thought in a million years you'd dare to do that! Yes, I wanna shake your hand! I do, I do, I do! I wanna go! I wanna see Aya! What do you think about my outfit? Does this thing look totally awesome on me, Megos? Don't play that game with me! Suck it up and get to work! If we're gonna do this thing, we need to get organized right now! You will buy soft serve ice cream 5 minutes and 15 seconds from now. You will drop it in 5 minutes and 28 seconds from now. You will hit your head on a sign 7 minutes and 6 seconds from now. Ah! No, no, wait a minute, please! Oh no! Oh, excuse me, but I need to go that way! Ah! The dub also has one of my favorite performances from Stephanie Shea, a longtime voice actress to anime, and the English voice of Mikuru and Haruhi. SHUT THE HELL UP! What's with all the chit chat when my career's at stake? How many times I gotta tell you when I'm talking, you better shut your- I'm convinced the dub having a number of actors and actresses from Haruhi in this was intentional, considering that both of these shows are done by Kyoto Animation, and again, the number of references throughout the series. I suppose if there's any criticism I have of it, it would mainly be that while I love this show, it ain't my cup of tea these days, sadly. I'm not too big a fan of slice of life stories anymore, but with that said, Lucky Star definitely has something going for it. Even if what it has going for it isn't really relevant much these days. I suppose it would be hard for anyone that didn't grow up in the mid 2000s to get into it, mainly because again, it's a product of its time. But then again, I could be wrong if you were actually interested in it.
Outside of Konata and her friends, there are two things I do have to mention. The first being Lucky Channel, which centers around two hosts, which has one of the funniest moments near the end of the show that I dare not give away. But I will play this scene from the finale for shits and giggles. Okay, cut it! Let me finish saying, damn it! It's only a mic check! Besides, we're out of time! The second is a more underrated work that is definitely related to Lucky Star. The Miyakawa family's hunger is a shorter series centered on two siblings, both of which you could say had cameo appearances in Lucky Star for a few seconds each time, with how they're shown in it. It's actually quite a contrast in terms of character focus, whereas in Lucky Star, the girls each live in households that seem to be doing fairly well for themselves, especially on Miyuki's behalf considering she's rich. In this, the girls are broke, struggling financially, with the youngest sibling wanting an actually decent meal, and the oldest being Otaku not to be trusted with money, but the only one able to work. Truth be told, I'm not too sure why I personally stand on it nowadays. While I tried to talk about this show with as much interest as I can muster, it is mainly on a bias, since I personally hold a lot of nostalgia for it. Especially since... Truth be told, this was the first anime that actually got me into anime. While I grew up with Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and even Naruto, all those were the four kids or US virgins, so I don't really count them. But, Lucky Star, I essentially just stumbled across it. Then Klana, then Full Metal Panic from Mofu, then Haruhi Suzumiya. These anime were my gateway into the indiscriminate realm of anime, and Kyoto Animation were the ones chucking me into it. So, I'd be lying if I said I didn't hold it in a warm place in my heart, especially after what happened to the studio years ago. And also, it being one of the few reasons I actually desire to go back to my past. So I guess, if you were to ask me if I love this show, my answer would be yes, but I can't say that it's necessarily my favorite show, at least not anymore. But still, I can't really say too much that I don't like about Lucky Star. What else can I say except it's a timeless, yet dated classic. Lucky Star! Lucky Star.